The Supreme Court is poised to hand down major decisions this month, possibly as soon as tomorrow, that will impact voting rights, affirmative action in college admissions, LGBTQ rights. This amid escalating ethics issues plaguing the court after the revelation of lavish travel and other unreported gifts to Justice Clarence Thomas from a Republican mega donor. The court has also been the center of controversy over its decision last June to repeal the right to an abortion by overturning Roe v. Wade. And joining me now is Michael Waldman, author of a brand new book titled the Supermajority, How the Supreme Court Divided America. He's president of the Brennan Center at NYU and a former speechwriter to Bill Clinton. So the Supreme Court, in the center of controversy, unlike we've ever seen, your book is so timely. And talk about, you know, the information about Clarence Thomas, that is, as more could come out because they're financial reports, right. d disclosure reports. From One of the issues law. is that he wasn't disclosing. Some of it was not required at the time. There was sort of a loophole around travel from friends. But... You know, the salary to his wife, there were other things, the, the, yeah. um, the house that was bought, his mom's house. Right. Some of this is effectively the subsidizing of his lifestyle. And it is part of the collapse of public trust in the Supreme Court that we've seen. It's, in public opinion polls, it's at its lowest level ever recorded. Right now, there's a, a supermajority of six very conservative justices. They're making big moves. Last June, they overturned Roe v. Wade. They issued the most sweeping Second Amendment ruling by far in the country's history. They began to make it harder for government agencies to act on things like climate change and more to come. And I think that it's going to be a big issue. There's already a huge backlash brewing. Uh, that's the way it's been all throughout American history. When the court overreaches, there's a response. I think it's, it's the beginning in some ways of a shift in our political era. There's, there's a response to overreaction, but the new precedents have been set by Senator McConnell in terms of when nominees can even get hearings, Merrick Garland, of course, being the classic example. And uh, how do you see this changing? You know, I think there are things that can be done. I mean, some of this is just the polarization of this moment politically. But something like a uh, binding ethics code for the Supreme Court, nobody is so wise they should be the judge in their own case. That's something that could happen now. And term limits, 18-year term limits with a regular appointment every two years by the president, is actually very, very popular with the public, with Republicans and with Democrats. That would help take some of the poison out of the process uh, and bring the court more in line with the country, I think, over time. What about the voting rights case that is pending also? That's one of the ones that worries me a lot. This Supreme Court has gutted the Voting Rights Act. They're considering the shard of the law that's left. This is the great civil rights law that had such a big impact in the country. Uh, there's every reason to fear that they're going to finish the job of weakening it significantly and then do the affirmative action case where they end the use of race in college admissions. These are big, big rulings by nine unelected, lifetime appointed government officials. Uh, and that poses a challenge in a lot of ways to our democracy. The country is moving in one direction, but the court is veering sharply in another. And the leak of the draft <laughs> and then the Dobbs decision, how did the abortion ruling change public attitudes towards the court? Um, you've seen a real backlash toward the court on that ruling. Think about the midterm election. The Democrats did better than in decades for the party controlling the White House. A lot of that was reaction to the Dobbs case. You see it in ballot initiatives and Supreme Court elections in states all over the country. So people are roiled up about that one in particular. I think the next question is, will they start to connect that ruling to the Second Amendment ruling, which makes it so much harder to regulate guns in our country at a time of tragic shootings and, and, uh, and, and uh, rising violence? Michael Wallman, you've done it again, the supermajority, how the Supreme Court divided America. It's quite an achievement. Thank you very Thank much. You. Come back soon.